there are some very basic fundamental things about spirit, soul, and body that uh, need to be demonstrated and understood. Now we're talking about faith. Before I get into that, therefore I say unto you, whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, that's when you believe. That's when you start believing. Now, faith is a spiritual force. You can't necessarily feel it. You can sometimes feel the results of it, sometimes you don't. Well, how do I know if I'm believing? (laughs) Same way when you ask your mama, how am I going to know if I'm really in love? And she looked at you and said, you'll know. (laughs) Well, that didn't make much sense when you was 12. But oh, I learned it. Glory to God. October the 30th, 1961 (laughs) in Little Rock, Arkansas. I laid eyes on Gloria Jean Neese. <laughs> Glory to God. It hadn't been but a few days before I made this stupid statement. I don't know whether love's real or not. If it is, I'm incapable of it. I was mad at the world and everything in it just about. <coughs> Until I saw her. Boy, it blew that deal out of the tub. <laughs> Amen. Love is real. God is love. That's beyond real. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. So, when you stand praying, forgive. You believe you receive when you're praying and at the same moment you forgive. Well, I don't have anything against anybody. Well, do it anyway. Amen. You'd be surprised when you start doing that, that God will just start bringing things up to you, bringing things up. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, but that is just a little thing. I've had people actually tell me this. Brother Copeland, you know, I I just didn't, I've I've been waiting and waiting until I had money to to send into the ministry. And oh, you know, I'm a partner and I want to support it financially, but I couldn't, I couldn't send over about $5. Um, you and 25,000 others did the same thing. See how it compounds? It could have been a whole lot more than that. Your $5 counts. Amen. Amen. The minimum amount required to be a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries is two cents. That's the Bible minimum. Sure, you can spare a nickel. <laughs> so something. Yes. 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 That's the way you just show yourself out of the. Right. Yes. <laughs> just keep coming up wrong, wrong at a time. Glory. Amen. 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 These are all faith principles that that we need to just kind of stab at them and remind ourselves of them. It sounds like kind of a scatter barrel this morning, but it didn't. Because these are things we know. These are things we must be reminded of. Amen. Amen. Another thing, the power of a loud voice. Jesus could have said, Lazarus, come forth, but he didn't. He said it with a loud voice. Amen. I want to demonstrate that to you this morning. I want you to say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. We're going to say it together. And I want you to say it firmly, really like you mean it. Three, two, one. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, wait a minute. 
Wait a minute. Now this time, we're going to say it at the top of our voice. We are going to put a shout in this thing that'll get down in your bones. Three, two, one. Something happened. That's called stirring yourself up now. You can pray and pray and pray and cry and carry on. Oh God, stir me up, stir me up, stir me up. He has to have some work to work with. Amen. And he works with words. All this week, people are going to get healed by hearing words. People will get saved by hearing words. People will be baptized with the Holy Spirit by hearing words. Amen. If they act on the words they hear. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord praise for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now then, look at that again. When you stand praying, forgive, if you have ought against any, so that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. That's spiritual law. Our Father, which art in heaven, As we forgive those that trespass against us. He said it, didn't he? It don't work the other way around. It is seed, time, and harvest. It is not harvest, then plant the seed. That's not the way the cycle starts. Well, which came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken, (laughs) dum-dum. You don't get chickens without egg. Unless the government's changed that, but I, I, I don't think they have. <laughs> well, forgive me for calling you dumb, dumb, meathead. Oh, that's scriptural. Meathead is scriptural. Carnal. Minded. Carne. Chile con carne. Chile with meat. Head. <laughs> oh, there's something on this place this morning. Mark, I, oh, Hankins is here. That, that, that's what did this. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. All right, look at Matthew 21, 21. Well, Brother Copeland, you see, these are just spiritual mountains, not actual mountains or, you know, well, let's see if Jesus agrees with that. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, 
you shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree. Well, that was not a spiritual fig tree. That's right. Come on. (laughs) But also, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. You will, you will. Jesus said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Ask and you shall receive that your joy be made full. Now you can exercise the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, right? As I said, right in the middle of terrible and horrible pain, but your joy becomes full when the thing is totally manifested. Hallelujah. And you walk out of there with a healed and well body. I know I walked in pain because of my own hard headed (laughs) disobedience for a long time. And I want you to know, glory to God, I am totally and completely pain free. I am healed and made well from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I haven't been sick in so long. I don't, I, I have remembrance of the, the last time I actually yielded to flu symptoms. It was years ago. Now, <laughs> January before last in the minister's conference, just sitting there right on the front row, the symptoms of the flu came on me. I got, I started chilling, you know, pain mount around behind my eyes. Everybody, you know, talking about the flu and the flu shots. Well, we took our flu shots years ago. Out of Deuteronomy 28, Galatians 3.13. So, now I'm not talking to you against those flu shots. Do you know what that flu shot is? It's, a, it's an immune system booster. You can, you can do that. I mean, just be a natural human being. Just quit eating slop <laughs> and start sleeping at night. Well, I can't. Well, that's your fault. Get the shot. (laughs) Amen. You know, this is the name of the game, don't you? God gets on me, I get on you. That's just the way it is. (laughs) Amen. So, (laughs) I didn't, I just, I just started (laughs) <laughs> you can't put that on me, Satan, and you know it. You can't do it. I'm just sitting there, ha, <laughs> ha, just laughing under my breath. <laughs> you can't do it. And I still had the chills. And I said, no, no, you can't do it. You can't do it. I will not accept it. I don't have it. You don't have any case against me in the courts of heaven. I am a forgiver. I walk in love. I, I, I keep your, I keep the commandments of God. I do those things which are right in his sight. I love my neighbor as myself, fulfilling all the law and the commandments. I love the brethren, even as you love the brethren, Lord. Satan, you can't put that on me. You don't have a legal right to put that on me and I'm not taking it. It lasted about 15 or 20 minutes and he's gone. Hadn't had him since then. Amen. Amen. Yeah, but that don't work for me. I know it. (laughs) You know how I know? You said it. When Gloria and I were first learning this, you need a faith partner. And you don't get mad when you get caught. I had a serious disadvantage. (laughs) Gloria could go three days without saying anything. (laughs) I mean, she's very quiet. 
And she, she really didn't just come out you know, until she began to teach and, and, and preach the word. But even, even so, she just quiet nature to begin with. Well, I was just the opposite. She said, well, you did enough talking for both of us. So I, <laughs> and she's right. And I just, you know, <laughs> she'd say, that's your confession. Now, I believe it. <laughs> Keith and Phyllis, one of them would say something, the other one would say, if you say so. <laughs> well, it just scared me to death. Really? <laughs> Think about how the devil schooled us to, to talk. Scared me to death, thrilled me to death. Are you going? I'm afraid not. The laws faith filled words dominate the laws of death. Death filled words and fear filled words will dominate the words of life. They're spiritual laws. And they work on the blessing side and they work on the curse side because they are laws. There are words. Well, we live in a word created, word dominated universe, a up, word upheld universe. In the beginning was the Word, the Word with God, and the Word was God, and nothing created without Him, without the Word. But you can't, you can't change the laws, but you can change the words. Yeah. And when we begin to speak words of faith, words of God, whether they feel right or not, you go strictly into this book and you get so picky. You're in training. You just you, you just don't allow things to come out your mouth. You don't want come into pass. And boy, there's times you just have to just give yourself a pop across the face and say, shut up. Because you get in the habit of saying things you don't hear them when they come out your mouth. Particularly when you something you say a lot and your parents said it, you said it, and now your children are saying it when they're little old kids. And, and uh, you better stop that, you little fool. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to tell you something. You keep acting like this, Jesus won't love you anymore. Oh, that's a lie from hell. Yes, it is. He still loves you, doesn't he? There's nothing you can do to cause him not to love you any more or any less. That's right. Because he's all in. Amen. Amen. Everybody that's in hell, he loves them. And will never quit loving them. Well, why did he send them to hell? That wasn't his choice. The only man he ever sent to hell was Jesus. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. God didn't intend for any human being to go there. And the only sin that's, that will send anybody to hell is not accepting Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. Amen? I want to go to the 91st Psalm. If you'll go with me there, please. And I, I want you to see these same principles in operation. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. How do you get into that place? I will say. I will say. 
Nothing happens in this Psalm until this one man said something. There's three people in this Psalm. This person, that's you and me. And then there's Jesus. And then there is the Father and the Father closes it out. I will say of the Lord, here's the only statement that this man makes. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In him will I trust. He, this, this man just said it and shut his mouth. I used to get confused at the, at the order, the way it would bounce back and forth. In him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you. What? Didn't say surely he'll deliver me. <clears throat> now this is where we, now we're standing on Hebrews 3, 1. Hold your place and let's turn over there and look at it. I want you to get your, set your eyes on it. Oh, I'm almost out of time. I've only been here 10 minutes. <laughs> Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the one whom God sent, <clears throat> the high priest of our profession, the anointed Jesus. Jesus is anointed to be the high priest of his words in our mouth. We're not in this alone. We're not just speaking off out into the air or even into the spirit realm. Jesus is responsible for taking these words of faith and bringing them to pass and see to it that they happen because we're standing on Mark 11, 23, 24, and 25. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.